dumbed down or simplified version of this. This right here is a full spectrum of color. There are no gaps, and this is what you would expect coming off of basically any light. As we looked in the diffraction glasses, is all light like this? No. Most light has gaps in it. And these gaps right here is an example of the gaps that might appear if we were looking at hydrogen lit up. Now, is this an accurate depiction of hydrogen? No. Not especially, because we just looked at hydrogen a second ago. But you get the idea. There are gaps, right? Now, this is the spectrum of a star. This is an entire star spectrum. Now, you'll notice that there are lines going this way. That's because what we have here is a spectrum that's actually about the length of this classroom that's been chunked into segments, and each segment's just been set on top of each other. Looking at this spectrum from a star, you can see a whole bunch of gaps. Like, there are way more gaps here than there are gaps in any one individual element. So if there are more gaps in this star than any one element, what does that probably mean about this star? It's made up of a lot of elements. It's made up of a lot of elements, more than one element. If you look at these two pages, you can probably tell that. And feel free to separate them. Is it probably pretty reasonable to say that the stars are made up of more elements than, hey, ripping them apart does not require speaking. Is it probably fair to say that these stars have more than one element in them? Yes. 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 Okay, now, I'm going to pull up the document camera here, and I'm going to show you exactly what we're going to be doing. Our goal is to be able to actually tell which elements are found in which stars. And to do it is actually relatively simple. So I'm going to erase this so was from last period so you can kind of see what we did. Okay. I want you to start by looking at the spectral data of elements. So I'm looking at the spectral data of elements page first. Now notice there are eight elements. There's hydrogen, helium, calcium, lithium, sodium, and so on. Are any of these elements, do they have the exact same black lines? No. No, none of them are exactly the same. So I come over to the fingerprints of the stars. I have five stars. The Sun, Procyon, Betelgeuse, Sirius, and Aldebaran. Do any of these stars have the exact same gaps? No. So back to the spectral data of given elements. To compare a star to an element, I'm going to fold down the top of the page. I'm going to fold down the top of the page on the elements one so that hydrogen is now at the very tippy top of the page. Notice hydrogen's line is now at the very tippy top. Fold down your page the same. Yeah, and your fold doesn't have to be perfect. We just need to get hydrogen up close to the top. Okay, now I'm going to take hydrogen and I'm going to place it right underneath the sun. I'm going to try to line them up. So I've got the sun, I've got hydrogen, I'm comparing the two. Now this is where it can get confusing. I don't want to see if the sun matches hydrogen. I want to see if hydrogen matches the sun. So I'm going to look at the first big black line on hydrogen. Does this black line match a line in the sun? Yes. Now I'm going to continue down hydrogen to the next black line right here. Does the sun have that black line? Yes. And there's two more. Does the sun have these last two big black lines? Yes. So hydrogen matches the sun. That means the sun does have hydrogen. So I'm going to come right here and I'm going to circle it. I've got hydrogen. Next, fold it down to helium, so the helium is at the top. Again, your fold doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, you just need helium up kind of at the top. Line up helium in the sun. So like whenever you're comparing them, does the black line have to match like the dark black line or yes. does it have to be the line? It has the, the black lines have to match black lines. And I'm worried about the dark ones, not these light 
like these hardly visible ones. I'm not worried about those. So what if I'm worried about black, the gold ones. A black, like the gold black lines, what if it matches like the non-gold black lines? Not really. I'll give you, I'll show you here in just a sec. Okay, now, I've got helium. Does the first line in helium match? Yep, second line. Yep, keep going down. Does helium match at every spot on the sun? Yep, so I think it's fair to say that the sun has helium. The circle helium. Then fold it down to calcium. One sec. Okay, so we got calcium at the top now. Okay, now, Tori, I think this is going to answer your question. If I come to the first bold line in calcium, is that line present in the sun? I mean, it kind of is. The sun has a bold line there, but it's not very dark. Do you agree? Yeah, I would say that's not a match. Plus, these two bold lines of calcium, are they in the sun? No. No, these two bold lines right here are totally missing in the sun. I don't have to go any further than that. I have seen lines in calcium that don't exist in the sun, so I know that the sun does not have calcium in it. You kind of see what I'm doing and how this is working. All right, you're going to continue doing this down the page. All five stars, compare them to all eight elements. Pro tip, it might be a good idea, so say calcium, I'm working on calcium. Check calcium versus the sun, then check calcium versus propion, then check calcium versus beetle juice, and just go all the way down the line for all five stars. Just do one element at a time for all five stars. Might be a little more efficient that way. Does this make sense?